In this speaking practice test, you will be able to demonstrate your ability to speak about a variety of topics. You will answer six questions by speaking into a microphone. Answer each of the questions as completely as possible. In questions one and two, you will speak about familiar topics. Your response will be scored on your ability to speak clearly and coherently about the topics. In questions three and four, you will first read a short text. The text will go away, and you will then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about what you have read and heard. You will need to combine appropriate information from the text and the talk to provide a complete answer to the question. Your response will be scored on your ability to speak clearly and coherently, and on your ability to accurately convey information about what you have read and heard. In questions five and six, you will listen to part of a conversation or a lecture. You will then be asked a question about what you have heard. Your response will be scored on your ability to speak clearly and coherently, and on your ability to accurately convey information about what you heard. In questions three through six, you may take notes while you read and while you listen to the conversations and lectures. You may use your notes to help prepare your response. Listen carefully to the directions for each question. The directions will not be written on the screen. For each question, you will be given a short time to prepare your response, fifteen to thirty seconds, depending on the question. A clock will show how much preparation time is remaining. When the preparation time is up, you will be told to begin your response. A clock will show how much response time is remaining. A message will appear on the screen when the response time has ended. In this practice test, you can click on "Stop Recording" to stop the recording of your response. You can also click on "Playback Response" to hear your recording. Once you have heard your response. You will have the opportunity to record your response again, or confirm that you want to keep your response. In questions three through six, you can click on Replay Talk if you want to listen to the conversations or lectures again. During this practice test, you may click the pause icon at any time. This will stop the test until you decide to continue. You may continue the test in a few minutes or at any time during the period that your test is activated. Please note that the stop recording, playback response, replay talk, and pause icons are available only for this practice test. They will not be available during the actual test. If you do not use these functions, your experience will be closer to the actual TOEFL test experience. Performance on the speaking practice test is not necessarily a predictor of how you might perform during an actual TOEFL administration. Click on Continue to go on. Number one. In this question. You will be asked to talk about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Talk about an interesting book you have read. Explain why you thought the book was interesting. Give specific details and examples to explain your answer. Talk about an interesting book you have read. Explain why you thought the book was interesting. Give specific details and examples to explain your answer.
Number 2. In this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Some people think that children should be allowed to watch whatever television programs they choose to. Others think that parents should exercise control over the television programs their children watch. Which do you agree with? Explain why. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 3. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Central College is planning to renovate its dormitories. Read the article in the college newspaper about the plan. You will have 45 seconds to read the article. Begin reading now. to two students discussing the college's plan. The college is making a mistake with this new plan. What do you mean? I think it'll really help accomplish the college's goals. Don't be so sure. All that construction for two years, it's going to create a lot of noise. Well, you mean in the beginning, for students still living in the dorms. Yeah, students who are trying to sleep or do work are constantly going to be disturbed. So people will try to get as far away as possible, probably by moving off campus. So they'll lose even more people. Huh, I hadn't thought of that. But still, once all the construction's over, more people will probably want to live in the dorms, right? I mean, the living conditions will be so much better. If they can afford to. Do you know how the college is planning on paying for this plan? By raising the cost of campus housing. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so if it's more expensive, why would people want to move back into the dorms if they can rent an apartment for less money? The woman expresses her opinion about the college's plan. State her opinion and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep.
Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 4. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Now read a passage about outsider art from a modern art textbook. You will have 45 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture in an art history class. All right, so let's consider the work of the outsider artist Henry Darger. Darger lived by himself in a tiny apartment in Chicago in the 1900s. He had no friends and spent all his spare time there alone, creating hundreds of paintings and drawings. He had never formally studied art and kept his work completely private, so no one ever saw it or responded to it during his lifetime. And so when you see Darger's work, you notice how unique it is. It doesn't remind you of anything you've ever seen before. It's very much his own. For example, one piece, it's a watercolor painting. In this piece, he illustrates a story about the adventures of seven children. But see, Darger had a really hard time drawing human figures, yet he managed to come up with his own rather unique solution for the problem. He simply cut out pictures of children from newspapers and magazines, and pasted them into his own painted illustration of trees, flowers, and grass. The results look, um, a little strange. Darger's picture looks more cluttered, more crowded with details than the pictures of other artists, because its entire surface is painted and there are no spaces left empty. It's also a lot longer than the pictures of most other artists, about nine feet long. Explain why Henry Darger is considered an outsider artist. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.
Number 5. In this question, you will listen to a conversation. You will then be asked to talk about the information in the conversation and to give your opinion about the ideas presented. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Between two students By the way, Frank, I heard you got a summer research position with Professor Davis. Uh-huh, but I've got a problem. Oh? Yeah, well, since I didn't hear from her for so long, I assumed I didn't get the position, so I didn't apply for a dorm room for the summer. I'm afraid it's too late for that now. Yeah, the deadline for campus housing applications has already passed. So what are you going to do now? Well, I can stay with my parents. They live two hours from here, and so I thought I could drive and commute to campus every day. I know my mom and dad would be happy to have me over for a few weeks, and most of my old friends will be home for the summer, so in a way it'd be fun. Yeah, I understand. But you'd spend quite a bit of time on the road going back and forth. Won't you get tired? Yeah, that thought did cross my mind. The other thing I could do is rent an apartment off campus. Besides being much closer to work, I'd also save tons of money on gas. Uh-huh. But then you'd have to pay rent. I know. There's always something, isn't there? The students, dis the students discuss a problem and two possible solutions. Briefly summarize the problem, then state which of the two solutions you prefer and explain why. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 6. In this question, you will listen to a short lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of a lecture in an interior design class. So we're talking about interior design, uh, specifically the basic principles typically used in home and office decoration in the United States. Effective designs create a delicate balance between two things. You need unity and you also need contrast, which is essentially a break in unity. Now this might seem a little contradictory, but let me explain why we need both of these for an effective design. So for the first principle, we need unity in our design. Think of it as um, consistency. Well, an easy and very effective way to do this is by bringing together similar elements. A common example is by matching colors. You pick a color and use it for different parts of the room. Say you pick green, and then use a light shade of green for the walls and maybe a somewhat darker shade for the fabric on the sofa, 
and finally complement that with a matching green in the rug. When elements match, the room is unified and gives its residents a sense of order and comfort. Okay, but there is such a thing as too much unity. Remember, you need a balance of unity and contrast. If all you do is focus on unity, the result will be a boring room. So, what do you do? Well, you apply the second basic principle of design, which is contrast. Contrast serves to disrupt or、uh, break up the unity in places, but in a careful, intentional way. Um. Well, let's continue using color as an example. To create contrast, color contrast, you need to abruptly change your color scheme once in a while.、Uh, let's see. You could、um, throw bright red cushions on your dark green sofa, for example. Contrast makes things stand out. The green will look even greener next to the red. So now your room is more interesting, not completely the same. But watch out! Too much contrast is also dangerous, just like too much sameness is. Too much contrast will make the room feel busy. Using the points and examples from the lecture, explain what unity and contrast are, and how they make interior design more effective. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.